Hello dear friends, my name is Brother Sean and I would like to share with you some personal thoughts about the title of this short video, The Spirit Blows Where It Wills. Today we are living in exciting times. And I say that because the Spirit of God, the third person of the Trinity, has often been forsaken, left ignored, and yet without the presence of the Holy Spirit, we would be none the wiser in our ministry, for we need the indwelling of the Spirit of God. And the Spirit of God is created through the love that the Father, Mother God have for their beloved Son, Jesus. And that love creates a third person. That might sound heretical to you, but for those of us from the Christian persuasion, it means such an awful lot, for we rely on the Holy Spirit to guide us. And I would like to say that over the last millennium, <clears throat> many of us are being guided by the Spirit of God to take back our power, not to become rebellious, or difficult, but to take back our power and to come into the oneness of divine love. And many today are doing just that. Recently we have read of a group of American nuns who have been inspired, I believe, by the words of the Spirit of God, by the love of God to make a stand against the injustices that have been committed in the name of God by their brother priests. And they have looked to the Vatican for support and that support has met with their request with rejection, with admonition, as much as to say, how dare you defy us? Is that the spirit of God? I don't think so. Jesus the Barefoot Galilean didn't set out to create a church. That was man's doing. Jesus created a fellowship of like-minded souls who had one desire and that was to fall in love with God, to embrace a God of love. And regrettably, since the Council of Nicaea, Back in the year 593, we know that when they removed the presence of women from worship and the church became a male dominant presence, it lost its balance. And down through the centuries, we know that many great women, inspired by the love of God and the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, have tried to voice God's concern for his children and his church. And their words would appear to have fallen on deaf ears. Today, many ordinary men and women are being touched by God. They are being inspired by God. And the Spirit of God is pouring unconditional love into their hearts for them to reawaken to the divine and not to get embroiled in hypocrisy, in duplicity, in double standards. Many feel that their church has forsaken them by not being more transparent. But the Spirit of God will guide us and the Spirit of God today is blowing where he wills. And though he has tried in his church and throughout all religious beliefs, many are still stuck in a male dominant ego that denies the feminine energies of God. And such a church that has not this balance will eventually die within Allow me to share with you some of the reflections from Jesus. 
There is no condemnation for those who are in me. The law of the spirit of life has set you free from the law of sin and death. Not many Christians know how to live in this radical freedom, which is their birthright. I died to set you free. Live freely in me. To walk along the path of freedom, you must keep your mind firmly fixed on me. Many voices proclaim this is the way for you to go, but only my voice tells you the true way. If you follow the way of the world with all its glitter and glamour, you will descend deeper and deeper into an abyss. Christian voices also can lead you astray. Do this, don't do that. Pray this way, don't pray that way. If you listen to all those voices, you will become increasingly confused. Be content to be simple sheep, listening for my voice and following me. I will lead you into restful green pastures and guide you along paths of righteousness. There we have it. There is a simple explanation. Listen to the one inner voice, the voice of God speaking to your heart. It says here there are many voices clamoring for our attention. And any religious family, be they Christian, or non-Christian that dictates their power to enshackle or enslave one's heart is not of God. Because here Jesus said there is no condemnation for those who are in me. And we know and I know as a Catholic Christian that I too have had to stand aside from my loving family because its voices from on high, from the Vatican, have alienated my heart. They have alienated my heart because of the confusion and the duplicity and the lack of grace and humility. It's as if our family, the hierarchy, has become a tyrant that has been unleashed by ego. And when I see women of substance, women who have given their lives to God in service, through love, and who share and express their concerns about social injustice. And they are met with disapproval. And worse, they are admonished for daring to speak their truths. That says a lot to my heart that here we have a religious hierarchy that are more about keeping up appearances and disciplining those who've been inspired by the Spirit of God, it makes you wonder, who, who are guiding the children of God? Is it the Spirit of God or is it male ego? I would say to you, test everything that is asked of your heart. Come in love to the Supreme, a Father-Mother God who loves us and who wants us to be free of the doctrinal issues that seek to alienate us because of the minutiae. Let our hearts not be troubled. Come in love into the presence of God. I am not advocating a complete break away from your religious family, what I'm saying is pray for those who are in leadership positions that they will too be open to the spirit of change and that the voice of God, a voice of love, will guide their stubborn hearts because it would appear to me that had they been more humble and transparent in their dealings over the issues that have corrupted the mindset of many, they 
would be true vessels of love. Instead, we know there has been corruption from the very top, and that corruption has to be exposed. But there is forgiveness in God. There is forgiveness. But as a child of God, in service to God, I am not here to, to sit in judgment on my brothers and sisters. I am here to offer a loving embrace and to be still and allow the Spirit of God blow where he wills in my life. I pray that you will be open to the spirit of change and honour your heart regardless.